Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar, Why Canada is a Good Place to Scale Your Latin American Startup. My name is Marian Lazarte, and I'm a co-founder and uh, business development for Latin Startups. So, let's start. Um, Latin Startups is a movement helping startups to scale into either Latin America through Pacific Alliance or Brazil, or North America through Canada. So just first, before we start, let me go through some basic information. You can ask questions or place comments under the comment section of this video on YouTube. You can also use the hashtag Latam Startups to ask questions or email us to contact latamstartup.biz. All questions are going to be answered as soon as we finalize with this webinar. At the end, we are going to send you a small survey. So uh, to have your opinion and feedback about the information we provided, this is very important for us. So now let's start. So I'm not sure how many of you know anything about Canada, but Canada is certainly an interesting place uh, that mainly Latin American startups uh, haven't discovered yet. Canada, as you probably know, share a big border with the USA, as you can see here. And uh, as, uh, well, USA is basically the primary business partner for uh, Canada. This map here represents more and less how business work for some cities. So you can see here, Vancouver is very close to San Francisco. And for those Silicon Valley lovers, you can see this part, uh, this particular city has a great connection with this famous area in North America. Now, it doesn't mean that Toronto or Montreal don't have the same uh, connection. It means for people uh, located in Vancouver, it's easier to reach this destination. And also cultural behavior may be similar in some aspects. Toronto, for instance, that is here, very small. Toronto um, has a great connection with uh, New York uh, here and Chicago. And uh, also Montreal has a great connection with uh, New York as well. So for you can see here, uh, these flights fly, fly from Toronto to New York or uh, Chicago, maybe less than two hours, it's an hour and a half. And for Vancouver to San Francisco, it's two hours and a half. From here, you need to know that uh, Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal were selected between the best uh, startup cities in the world. Uh, that um, rate just came up in December 2015. So we have other Canadian cities and those uh, rates like uh, Waterloo and Ottawa also um, uh, has a great startup ecosystem there. Depending, uh, depending on where you go, uh, you will find some very particular aspects of the startup ecosystem. According with your services or your products, uh, one city or another may work better for your startup. When you're planning your scaling process, uh, this is very important to select the, the best place to start up in North America. For instance, Toronto is well known for uh, its fintech, uh, fintech ecosystem, biotech and medical uh, research and development uh, is developed also in Waterloo and Toronto. As well, uh, you know, when we are talking about green tech and um, clean tech, this is uh, this kind of solutions are uh, actually developing more in Vancouver. Uh, video gaming and animation, uh, Toronto and Montreal, and ICT in general is strong in the three big cities. So it will depend also the kind of institution that you are linked on, and uh, the company supporting the startups may be very specific about the sector they are developing. Uh, so it will depend really about um, what kind of incubator or accelerator are you looking for or who are going to engage here in, in the market as a connector. So let's see here. Uh, in general, uh, where, is the, uh, where is the money going? So uh, you can see here 32% uh, of the money in Canada is going to internet software and services. And 16% um, goes to e-commerce, 
and about 9% goes to renewable. As you can see, mainly ICT is the sector where the investors invest most. Um, here in investment, you can see um, Toronto uh, is here, 15%, Vancouver 28% gets most of the investment in, in Canada. But uh, there, there is something uh, reflecting here uh, how much an investor can invest in, in these cities. You can see Toronto, Ottawa, and even here Kitchener and Waterloo are part of the Ontario area. So that means that many uh, investors also invest in Ontario, mainly in Toronto, but also in Ottawa, which is the capital of Canada. And uh, Montreal is um, just after that, 7% uh, of the Montrealists uh, get, gets um, some investment from uh, the Canadian investors. And if you talk about the exits, the exits here, you can see um, exits are going to um, are best in Toronto, 29% of the exits in uh, Canada goes to Toronto. And then uh, you can see Vancouver is after with 14% and then Montreal. So again, the big cities are those that are getting the, um, the best uh, activities regarding a startup, either investors or exits or, you know, activities regarding ICT. So, where to start? Consider that Canada and US are very close, but the communities are not exactly the same. The startup ecosystem in Canada is particularly COVID friendly, not just because Canada are famous internationally for being friendly, but also because uh, the different kind of support you can get either from the government or the private institutions. The good news is that uh, many cities in Canada, big or small, have a good infrastructure to support the startups. For example, incubators, uh, accelerators, um, connectors, investors, and mentors. Mainly, you can see that in many, many cities in Canada. This is something of, uh, about Canada I really love. You get... Um, always people helping you either with information or connections, no matter where, where you come from. Canada is very well known for its multicultural environment. So uh, you certainly will learn how to do business here with so many different uh, cultures. Other things to consider is that some people uh, know that French is part of the Canadian culture, especially for those looking to scale up in cities like uh, Montreal. French is a basic um, basic thing for you to learn to do business there. Vancouver and Toronto are pretty much English. Uh, the connectors. So the connectors in, in, in the community are many. You need to know um, that there, there are really many tools in the market, either to incorporate or to find mentors, potential customers, users, and even find investors. At the beginning, you may like to connect with this with a Startup Canada, for example. So what is the Startup Canada? Startup Canada, different from other movements in Latin America, is a nonprofit organization willing to connect you with the ecosystem. This means that uh, Startup Canada is not really an accelerator or an incubator. Startup Canada uh, has representations in many cities of this country. You can find locally somebody that can guide you and uh, do your process to connect with the startup ecosystem. In total, Startup Canada has 22 communities, which is amazing in such a big country that we are very dispersed. Uh, they do events frequently in order to provide information about the main topics that are concern, concerning startups. For example, financial support, where to find mentors, how to administrate your company, etc. And either, even, you know, they have also a group of investors know that they are going to provide invest to, to your company, but they provide probably the connection in some of the events they do. So Startup Canada also gives some grants. They are not super big, but they are good enough for center projects that you may have. Uh, they anticipate that you will need a space to work. Uh, to work. So Startup Canada also partner with some co-work spaces. In general terms, 
Startup Canada is a good source of information when you're expanding business in Canada. For instance, if you come to here to Toronto or Montreal or even Vancouver, they are going to have a Startup Toronto, Startup Montreal, and I think a Startup Victoria for now, a Startup Vancouver is coming up. So you actually will see there, uh, they, they have the local offices and connectors that can help you to start up. Other supporters in the market are private or public. You will find, for example, Futurepreneur giving you either grants or loans to start or grow your business. From the public sector, you will find institutions are as Enterprise Toronto. Uh, the Enterprise Toronto is part of the city of Toronto and they, they help also startups, startups that are already located here, for example, in Toronto, with some small, uh, small grants and also connecting you with the ecosystem in the city. They provide information sessions, meetups and other big and small events uh, where you can find support and details about certain topics uh, for your startup. So this, uh, I, I want you to understand this. These are just Two examples, there are many, many connectors in the market. In Vancouver, Lunch Academy, you know, in Montreal, you have many, many connectors. I'm just putting some examples here. If you are thinking that um, what kind of a startup you can find in Canada, uh, well, whether uh, they are well known or not, you most know that startups as hoods with and uh, Shopify today uh, valued in $1 billion. Each of them are located here in Canada, one in Vancouver, one in Ottawa. Those also are two examples about the startups that are still located in Canada and they have grown fast in the market. Of course, we have many other startups that are also uh, considered unicorns in the market because they have grown so fast and the valuation is so high. Uh, but those two are probably the most uh, well-known um, in some places in Latin America and some markets in Latin America. Uh, international startups are welcome to Canada. The government has developed a startup visa. It still, is a, a, this visa is in a prototype phase. We are going to talk deeply about uh, this in another webinar, as, as well as about the soft landing programs. Do you know many startups have taken advantage of them, the soft landing programs? With a soft landing program, any startup selected can be part of accelerator or incubator in Canada in a very easy way. Once you're located in Canada, it's so much easier to reach new customers and users in the US. As we have uh, a high connections in the ecosystem, for startups to come and try the market and, and through a soft landing program, that tool can be really helpful to understand better the situation of your startup. And if you're ready and and not to say here in North America, to, to adapt to, to the North American market, then you know you, you can think and in, in probably extend business and move on. Or you know normally we don't we don't advise uh, startups to move entirely the whole company to other places, but extend business that makes sense for uh, you know companies that are growing. But a soft landing program for sure give you the alternative to see if your startup will work in North America and you can pivot here the idea or the project that you have. So many of you may think why not then start in USA. If you are actually reaching American customers, no Latin Americans located in USA, you may find Americans are great with business and very happy to buy your product or service right away. And also very happy to say no and close the door immediately. So this is an experience that many startups in Latin America have shared with us uh, during these past two, two years that we have been working with the startup ecosystems in Latin America. Canadians are looking for quality as well, but in the process of make something meaningful for the market, Canadians are more likely to help you to pivot your startup if necessary, or to help you with the connections or, you know, with improvements for your startup. Also, Canada usually is looking for a fair business. As Canada has about 36 million people, a small population for such a big country, second biggest in the world, Canada has the same necessity of many countries in Latin America, which is to reach new markets. 
started from Latin America, as I just said before, didn't need to close business in our countries and move to Canada permanently, but certainly you need to expand. Um, if you want to grow, we need, to, uh, we need more successful startups in Latin America. Um, Canada is a good partner to help you to succeed. It's a good partner for USA. It's a good partner for the region. Canada has a lot of uh, support that you may not find the same in USA, but you will find it here. And uh, uh, I'm sure uh, this is something that somebody told me years ago. When you come to Canada, then you don't want to leave. <laughs> And that's true, you know, the, the first thing that I thought was to go to New York after I come to Canada and I didn't do that because I really love the ecosystem. The ecosystem is awesome. Canada is, is a great place to start up uh, and to scale to the startup. Now, our next webinar will give more details about uh, the tech cities like uh, Toronto, Vancouver and Montreal. Uh, we'll have some guests invited, so you can actually ask direct questions to them about, uh, about each of this ecosystem in Canada. So if you have like a fintech company or, you know, a tech company, you can ask questions, what kind of tools or what kind of support you can get from these ecosystems in, in Canada. We also have, we, we always highlight Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal, because are the big cities, but there are other, other cities around that are also worth it to see. For example, Vancouver has closed uh, Victoria, which has really great ecosystem. I lived there for four years and it's amazing. Uh, it's really great for tech startups. For some tech startups, not all of them. Uh, of course, uh, as I mentioned before, it depends uh, of the kind of product or business that you have. Uh, you may like to experience one city or another. So we also have other webinars uh, with marketing tips and tools to share with you. So you can implement some uh, strategies to expand business without move for now. So you can reach uh, new potential customers and users in North America. Other webinars are referring to the Startup Visa and Soft Landing Program. Uh, so again, it's not going to be me here talking about that. It's going to be the experts on those areas that are going to talk with you and give you information about what is a, a Soft Landing Program and how you can take advantage of that, or what is the process to apply for a Startup Visa here in Canada. And finally, uh, how to incorporate a company in Canada. That's also like a, a very uh, common question uh, for many startups that have come here and they have seen the market and they see that it's, there, there is this possibility to actually incorporate in Canada. It's very easy in compared with other countries. In compared with US, I believe it's easier. And uh, you have you can take advantage of the tax incentives that Canada has in the different regions. So again, uh, we are going to invite some lawyers. They, they can explain you how to incorporate the company. They can give you some tools, some information about how to do that and about immigration too for those that are thinking and probably, you know, uh, stay for, for a good time here in Canada and see how is the ecosystem. Uh, also, it's worth to mention that in July uh, 11th, 14th, we are going to have an ecosystem tour and training session here in, in Canada. We are going to visit Toronto, Montreal, Ottawa, and Waterloo, and you will find from first hand how is the ecosystem here. You will, you will visit the best incubators and accelerators we have in the market. We have a networking session and some training sessions about the market as well. So if you would like to take advantage of that, we are providing uh, invitation letters, you know, to help you to come here to Canada and see the market. And also at uh, the end of the, well, October, uh, we are thinking now is our annual conference, Latam Startups Conference in Mexico. So we hope to see you there. So thank you so much uh, for joining us during this webinar. Now uh, we are going to accept the questions. So I have here a first question from Andrea from Colombia. How do you apply to, uh, to Startup Canada or other programs in Canada? Well, uh, again, Startup Canada is, is not really um, um, 
an accelerator, so you cannot really apply to Startup Canada. They can, they can for sure help you for free. They, they are not going to, they are not going to ask you for money or anything or to apply to certain programs. They are just going to help you. Um, uh, if you need like a, a specific, you know, information about something uh, in the market. Um, for other programs like the self landing programs and others, uh, there are um, there are certain um, incubators and accelerators in the market, like for example DMC or even Mars. This this moment I know that they are kind of developing a self landing program. Community uh, University of Waterloo they have uh, a master in uh, entrepreneurship and and business. So you will see that actually you know you have alternatives to apply to different programs it, de it depends again what it makes sense for you if if, if it makes sense uh like um, um just to uh, you know go for fintech then i will say probably mars is a good place to go uh for energy is also mars a good place if you go to uh you know applications energy some, some aspect of energy, fashion tech, some things like that, DMC, it depends where, where are you going. Um, for, uh, we have another question from Carlos from Brazil. How difficult is to get a, a visa to go to Canada? Well, uh, it will depend also. <laughs> Um, uh, this, this will be, you know, what kind of visa are you looking for? If you are looking for a startup visa, it may be, uh, you know, depending on the product that you have, it may be complicated. Um, and maybe not, it depends on the connections that you have in the market. If it's as a self landing program, then you have a better kind of, uh, visa, you know, for like, it's probably easier. Um, Oh, other kind of visas, do you have a business visa and you have a tourist visa that for some countries is like a, you don't, you don't really need a visa. For example, Chile and Mexico, Chile especially don't need visa. Mexico, I think uh, for those that are already applied or have visas before uh, oh, from coming to Canada, so they don't need to apply again, they don't need a visa. I think they need a, a special document to to travel, but it's, it's simpler than a visa. And as far as I know, they are going to make easier things for Brazilians uh, also to come to Canada. Otherwise, you always need to have an invitation or you know be part of uh, certain events or, or projects to, uh, to, to come here to Canada through a visa. Tourist visa is, is, not, is not the same as when you are applying for the, um, for the uh, I mean, the, the tourist visa is not the same when you apply for the U.S. tourist visa. It's not the same process, not the same time. So I, I will uh, tell you, Carlos, just to try uh, in, some, in some point. Um, uh, okay. Uh, in some point to try to, um, you know, get, uh, get the sense what kind of opportunities you have trying to get visas, you know. Um, for another question from Angel from in Mexico, when is the conference in, in Chile? Uh, well, in Mexico, <laughs> the conference in Mexico is actually uh, in, um, in October. Uh, we are thinking in October now. And uh, uh, it's, it's close to be confirmed. It's close to be confirmed and uh, um, Mario Ferrero, I, I see your questions here. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I'm trying to get the, uh, uh, you know, the, the questions and everything here. So I'm going to uh, answer your questions soon. Um, yeah, so uh, for, for Carlos in Mexico, we are going to have the conference in, uh, in Mexico City uh, about October. If you sub subscribe to our newsletters, uh, we are going to, uh, you know, send information very, very soon. Uh, Tiago, uh, hello, uh, Tiago Acevedo. How big is the difference in cost when uh, setting up a cost, uh, company in those different cities? Well, I have to tell you something, Tiago. <laughs> 
uh, Sao Paulo and Santiago might be more expensive than Toronto and Vancouver. <laughs> so starting for there, uh, you would think that probably expenses are going to be 20% less than that you have there. Um, I will say the, uh, uh, the um, to set up a company, probably Vancouver or Toronto have the cheapest, uh, you know, places to set up a company. To leave, actually, to, to have, you know, to, to stay for a while. Um, Montreal has, has, is really cheap in compare with Toronto and Vancouver. Uh, but set up a company, you know, to incorporate a company is kind of like a $1,000 uh, or less than that. Like, and, and that's the probably the most, uh, in, the most highest level to incorporate. Um, Mario, uh, Mario Ferrero, you sent us a question. Uh, you don't know where to ask questions. You can ask questions through, uh, through LATAM Startup. So you just sent us um, a DM uh, through Twitter. If you ask your question with the hashtag LATAM Startups, I'm going to see your question and I'm going to you know, answer right away. Um, so not sure if uh, you guys have any other questions. Uh, but any other question that you may have, uh, either now or later, we are going to, you know, answer your question uh, whenever you. Okay, Mario. Uh, my, my question is: I'm starting to look uh, to commerce some products between Colombia and Canada. What are the toasts on the best type of roads that we can trade? Well, we that that's a really interesting question, Mario. Uh, it depends. It depends what kind of product. Uh, Colombia is really booming up. This is the year of Colombia uh, regarding the startups. This is uh, uh, the best time to actually to commercialize with Colombia. I will say with all of uh, all those countries that are in the Pacific Alliance, it's, it's, very, uh, it's, it's very, very uh, good time right now to start to, com to commercialize products. What kind of pros? It depends. You know, there, there are certainly many kind of pros. If, if you are talking about not like a tech startup and just a regular pro, I will say something regarding health. You know, it's, it's very good to commercialize there. Uh, yeah, fashion, uh, I mean, it depends of, of the city too. You will see in, in our next webinar about Colombia that basically regarding technology, and commercialization. There are two cities that are, are in Colombia very well known uh, for being, you know, attra for attracting actually business. One is Bogota and the other is Medellin. So for those that, that don't know about that, the Bogota and Medellin, they are sometimes competing each other, you know, to get the, the, main, the main customers. That shouldn't happen, but it's, it's how it is. And now Bogota is very good financially um, uh, regarding financial sector. Medellin is very good uh, as a tech hub. Uh, so th there are many components that you need to consider before you commercialize a product. Your, your question is really good, but it's, it's, it's also very wide. So it, it depends what you, do you have in mind. But certainly you can email me or in the next meetup or in the next uh, webinar, you can ask me a specific question, what kind of product it is. Maybe I can give you some more details about that marketing in specific. So uh, for now, thank you so much. We have finished the webinar. You can keep asking your questions either through contact LATAM Startups or uh, you know, to the hashtag LATAM Startups. And we are going to answer as soon as possible. Um, the first thing you are going to see is a survey after this, you know, asking you uh, if this information was really good for you for uh, to think to uh, to start to think in expanding business and if you need more specifics please uh, keep us posted about you know your comments and questions this is uh, what we do we we connect Latin America and Canada thank you so much